must return with the key of open doors today. Help me to take hold. Now, wait a minute. In Luke 11, 52, God was upbraiding the lawyers of his days. He said, I want to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. The key of knowledge. You will not enter in, and those who want to enter, you hinder them. The key of knowledge. So revelation is key to all of our inheritance in Christ. Revelation knowledge is key to all that belongs to us in the kingdom of God. Lord, help me to catch the key that opens all doors in this service today. Lift up your two hands and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, thank you again for taking us all through the month of January. And it's all ending today. Receive our thanks again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for the covenant we have enjoyed since the year began as individuals, as families, and as a church. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we are here today at your feet. Let no one return without an encounter. Amen. Let no one return without an encounter. Amen. And let every one of us return today with the master key of open doors in our hand. Amen. Take all the praise Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Again, you're welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. And so shall it be. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. We are concluding in this series today that is captioned, Unveiling the Blessedness of Prayer and Fasting. Unveiling the Blessedness of Prayer and Fasting. I'm fasting. Every commandment of scriptures is ordained for our profiting. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. Every statement of scripture is ordained to make us live a profitable life on the earth. Fasting is commanded for specific benefits, as we have tried to examine from Isaiah 58 and verse 6 to 14. Among others, to lose the bounds of wickedness, the forces holding your life bound, to let your press go free, and to break every yoke. That's enough. And then shall thy life break forth as the morning, and thy head shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of God will replace every shame and reproach around your life. Then shall thou call, and the Lord will answer. So he facilitates answers to prayers. Thou shalt cry, and he will say, Here I am. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. He shall satisfy thy soul in drought. You shall be like a watered garden and like springs of water whose water has filled out. Amen. Amen. Amazing things. Package into the mystery of prayer and fasting. So it's not just something we do uh, 21 day annual prayer and fasting. It's a weapon in the hand of believers 
to exercise their dominion over the wickedness of the wicked as we go through this wicked world. And they that shall be of you, so it imparts on your seed after you. Shall build the old ways, they shall repair the wasted cities, raise the former generations, desolations of many generations, and you yourself shall be called the repairer of the bridge and restorers of past to walk in. Amen. Amen. That's a pay setter. So it enhances the manifestation of our pace setting destiny in Christ. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So it's for our profit. Have you ever heard in your Bible that God ate? And God ate. Have you ever found that? So <laughs> You can check when you get home because I know people here are researchers. You can check that God went and ate. By the time he came back, he met them and began to talk to them. No. We are not fasting for God. You are fasting for yourself. So prayer and fasting is a weapon of victory over the battles of life. You never lose a battle anymore. Amen. The battle over somebody's health is finally won today. Amen. The battle over your career, over your family, over your children is finally won today. Amen. And Jesus said, in response to those who are questioning him, why are you not your disciples fasting? He said, well, you can't make them fast when they are attending a marriage ceremony. But when the bridegroom is gone, then shall they fast in those days. Matthew 9, 14 and 15. Mark 2, 19 and 20. And Luke 33, I mean Luke 5, 33 to 35. Then shall they fast in those days. So fasting is ordained for all end time saints. Jesus went up on Mount Olive. And now fasting began as he left. Praise God. He was fasting for them while he was here. After he was gone, they had to fast for themselves. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's look at some specific benefits that I want to talk about this morning. Number one, fasting is a platform through which God takes over our battles. He takes over our battles through the platform of prayer and fasting. And we saw the example in Second Chronicles chapter 20 in the days of Jehoshaphat. Three kings came together to destroy and get them out of existence. Each of the three kings was greater than Judah. And Jehoshaphat called for a fast. And everybody came together to embark on that fast. And then he lifted up his eyes and hands and prayed. You start from verse 3, then you go to verse 12. Oh God, we have no power or might against this great component that has risen against us. <laughs> Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on thee. And the word came, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Leave it to me. They went to hand over their battle to God in a fast. So fasting is a medium through which we hand over our battles to God. We hand over our battles, the battle of our life to God through the mystery of prayer and fasting. And as they began to sing and to praise, God took over the battle, turned the enemies against themselves, and not one of them escaped. That's what will happen. From henceforth, you won't need to struggle again to, to have victory. Yeah. Jesus will be taking over your battle. Yeah. Number two, fasting enhances our access 
to divine guidance, launching us into realms of greater glory. The Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. It will make fat your bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose water is filling out. End of dry season. <laughs> Throughout this year, you shall not know a dry season in your life. <laughs> you shall not know a dry season in your family. <laughs> you shall not know a dry season in your business and career. In Isaiah 48 and verse 21, and they thirsted not when he led them through the desert. He brought, he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. Get ready for a gushing experience this year. As you allow God to guide your steps. Though the earth looks so desertly, you shall be like a watered garden. Yeah. And like a spring of water, whose water is filling out. That shall be your experience. Yeah. God said something to me many years ago. I'm committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. God does not lead Jack and Harry. You are committed to following me. I'm committed to leading you. Most of the time we inform God about what we want to do. We don't ask him direct our steps. Oh Lord, just to let you know I'm on my way to London. In case you are not aware, I bought my ticket already. And I thank you for giving me a go ahead. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you just inform God. If somebody came your way and said, look, I'm on my way to the airport. I just need your counsel whether I should go on this journey or not. But well, my luggage has gone ahead. They have checked him. <laughs> what you do is thank you very much. Go in peace and return with joy. He didn't need your counsel. I mean, don't waste your mouth. The matter is settled. I only ask you because they may say I didn't ask you. I say, okay, go in peace in the name of Jesus. Most of the time, we just inform God about what we want to do. We don't ask the direction. The Bible said, Lay not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Proverbs 5, 3, 5 and 6. The Lord shall guide thee continually. That means we will need guidance continually. In order not to run your life into a wilderness and into a desert. And fasting provides that avenue where we receive God's direction. Where he guides our steps on the right path. No one here shall miss his steps anymore. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down on green pastures. He refreshes my soul. When you are guided by the Lord, your soul is refreshed. You don't suffer lack and want. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Surely, as I follow your leading, goodness and mercy only shall be following me and all the days of my life. That shall be your experience. Yeah. Number three, blessing that accrued to us through fasting is fasting engenders divine health and vitality. Your health shall spring forth speedily. Fasting enhances health and vitality. 
why and how. There's an outbreak of light that destroys the powers of darkness oppressing us. Every sickness is a raw oppression of the devil. And we wrestle not against, I mean, against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Ephesians 6 12. Jesus said to the devil, He said, This is your hour and the power of darkness. Matthew. I mean, Luke 22 and verse 23. This is your hour and the power of darkness. The stronghold of the devil is darkness. And when light breaks forth, darkness clears the way. And fasting is a platform for the outbreak of light. So when light breaks forth, sickness packs out. Disease packs out. Affliction packs out. In Job 33, we saw a very graphic picture there that we have used there several times. Verse 21 to 25, he said, His flesh is consumed a way that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to destroy us. But if there be an, an interpreter with him, a messenger with him, an interpreter of the truth, one among a thousand, who will show unto man his rights in God, then God will mess unto him and say, Deliver him from going out to the pit. I found the ransom. When truth breaks forth, the oppressed are set free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And the Bible said, his flesh shall be fresher than that of a child. Job 20, 33 and verse 21 to 25. He shall return to the days of his youth. Rejuvenation. The miracle of rejuvenation coming through by the outbreak of light. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, no breakdown for anyone in this winner's family this year. And it shall remain your covenant asset for life. Amen. As long as you keep walking in the light of scriptures, your future is guaranteed. Amen. For anyone that may be sick on their bed right now, wherever they may be in any hospital, I decree instant healing power of God to locate them there. Amen. And set them free today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, fasting secures posterity. Secures the life and destiny of our children and our children's children in their generations. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? Among other things, they that are of thee shall build the old ways. So it's impacting on them. They shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the desolations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairers of the bridge. Restorers of past to walk in. So it does not only stop with you. The effect and impact of a prayer and fasting life goes to impart on our children's children after us. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. In Psalm 1, 1, 2 and verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delights himself greatly in his commandments, his seed also shall be mighty upon earth. 
One of his commandments is fasting commandments. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. And what happens? Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endure it forever. That's you. No one will go any lower than the highest to reach in your lining. I know God is lifting people here every day. No matter how high you fly, no one in your lineage, no one among your children, your children's children, will be one inch lower than the highest reach. Because every generation is ordained to be an improvement on the previous. And so your children and your children's children will be an improvement, definite improvement on your life. Thank God you love God, they will love God more. Thank God, you are, thank God you are serving him, they will serve God more. God is enlarging you, he will enlarge them more. God is promoting you, he will promote them more. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's what makes a work with God different from the efforts of life. You can only define it now by your effort and your skill. But working with Jesus goes ahead to define the future of your children's children in their generations. It's a world of difference. It's a world of difference. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Also very importantly, it's important for us to know that fasting is a platform for invoking vengeance on our enemies. Invoking vengeance on our enemies. More often than not, until vengeance shows up, the wicked never gives up. Until vengeance shows up, the wicked never gives up. Until God brought that national plague on Egypt, they won't let Israel go. But everybody, including the king, they lost their firstborn. All the animals lost their... Now, we're about to be lost. That's what happened. Let them go. Go, 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 go. And bless me, oh, please, bless me. Bless me as you are going. It was vengeance that showed up that made the enemies to give up. So fasting is a platform for invoking vengeance into the camp of our enemies. Jesus taught us to pray vengeance prayers. <laughs> you know that? In Luke chapter 18. Avenge me of my adversaries. But it won't. But because he won't let go. He said, how much more will God avenge his own elect? Who cry unto him night and day? So God wants us to invoke. We don't wait for him to bring vengeance. We invoke it. Yes, sir. We invoke vengeance. Come on now. In the name of Jesus, vengeance from heaven. Answers on your head if you won't let me go. Now, anyone that won't let you go or let your children go or let your grandchildren go, vengeance will strike on them. Yeah. Man, I, I, I caught something from A. Allen's tape, 1979. The Lord came in! I'm making a life! Yes. For Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. The, this lion was running on that tape. Immediately I saw a transformation of my heart. My heart just boom, from a chicken heart to a lion heart. I'm not serving a year year God. You don't play nonsense around that. That a lion is sleeping does not make him, make him become a cat. You can't tell whether a lion is sleeping or he will just do his eyes like this. <laughs> By the time you come near and say, what is fresh food without running? Because a lion runs a lot to catch his free. And now one walks into his den. <laughs> Thank you God for breakfast. Very fresh one. Any devil that moves around your territory will be consumed by God's vengeance. This was what they did. Will thou not judge them? God said, you know my job now. 
I will. Yes, yes. For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Because the year of my redeem has come. God has ordained this year your year of entry into your promised land. Amen. Any devil that is out to resist it will go down for you. Amen. For surely they shall gather together but not by me. And everyone shall get, that are gathered together against you, they shall fall for your sake. Neo pike tu zaret, ene proki ane shange, eko katane karedos, ene mboro da singeno, embrogo lokotizia, ande pake tane ruse, amble krodia ne sago laberane. Now all of you demand vengeance in the camp of your enemy. Demand vengeance in the camp of your enemy. Demand vengeance. Enough is enough. Demand vengeance in the camp of your enemy today. The enemy of your health, your family, your business, your children. Demand vengeance right now. Demand vengeance right now. Demand vengeance. Redo pike nero di alesa, ero di ke neto ti ane pro ke ene roda, shegrado, emeletos, egarada, agelete, eborade, ezizarote, egolapara, engelo kotize, embarabayato, barade, tekeno. Jesus, precious name, we are praying. Amen. Prophetically, your year has come. Amen. And among others, this is the year of vengeance of the Lord in the camp of your enemy. Amen. He said, For in righteousness thou shalt be established, and you shall be far from oppression. Isaiah 54 and verse 14. For surely they shall gather together, verse 15, but not by me. And they that gather together against you shall fall for your sake. <laughs> now, every gang up against this church falls for our sake. Every gang up against your family falls for your sake. Gang up against your sons and your daughters, fall for your sake. Every gang up against your head, falls for your sake. Every gang up against your business and career, falls for your sake. In the name of Jesus. Salvation means freedom from oppression. Yes. Freedom from oppression. Redemption means out of the market. Yes. Bought and brought out of the market. So buy and selling is not part of you anymore. Amen. So everything buying and selling in your destiny crashes for your sake today. Every force closing the door against your progress Falls for your sake today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every gang up against the destiny of Nigeria. Falls for our sake today. The hearts men have been having a fee day because of the backings they receive from wherever they receive it from. But right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
everyone out against the security of this nation crashes for our sake today. Now pray in the spirit, everybody. Pray against them. Reketu Zedu Teplodia, Yesha Garadane, Embro Bolokot, Neriso Bakate, Embra Kalote, Yekorode Teplodia Neso, Bradayaka Keti Keturito, Ezozia, Rapole Keta, Enterotuso, Bakande Keruto, Barada Takenoto, Bretisoso, Beritoto, Bretisoso, Bretisoso, Encaracato Teke. Em prokoto kanete tonia berisa sore poda agala 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 melolos thank you jesus in jesus precious name we are praying fire has come down The fire of the Lord has descended already. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a victorious clap offer. Be seated, please. Netu susure, ambre ketua ne pakones, ekuso soto prodia, mail, mekutuni anotus. Brekushi agerade sanopanos, ne da potaporian, ne kurush agelanto prodia. <laughs> Power belongs to God. Ne roske opiange kenito so, there is no power but of God. En diande to zetune, when he stretches forth his hand, no one can turn it back. Me muanke, kantroni, ero piano tune, rizuzurianka. Making Tony Manning Teno Nigeria is liberated. <laughs> Whatever must go down, must go down. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Finally, fasting enhances fulfillment of prophecies. It was God's agenda to set free his people from Egypt. But the gods of Egypt, walking through Pharaoh, said, no way. And God said, well, when they open, no one can shut. Pharaoh, I will put a hook in your nose. Then you will know that I'm God. I will bring one more plague upon Egypt and upon Pharaoh. And after that, he will let you go. In fact, he won't just let you go. Trust you up. Go, 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 go. And that's what he did. God said, I'm bringing them out. Pharaoh said, no way. God said, now you now know who has the way. He struck with one judgment. Go, 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 go. Then the demons possess him again. He pursue after them. And crashed in the Red Sea. Hallelujah. So prophetic wars require warfare for delivery. This charge I commit to you, my son Timothy, First Timothy 1 18, according to the prophecy that went before thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Fasting and prayer is that platform where we engage in a good warfare to enforce delivery. Of prophecies. God has spoken. This 40th year of this ministry, we have entered into our promised land. Any devil or agent of the devil that stands in the way will be crushed. Your promised land is a reality. The promised land of this commission is a reality. 
When God is out on a mission, clear the way. Hallelujah. When we see a trailer that lost control, you better clear. You pick race. Yes, sir. You leave your car and run. Because you run over the car and then go his way. Fasting enhances fulfillment of prophecy. So ensure that every fasting you embark upon, you keep enforcing the reality of your promised land. The land where you eat bread without scarceness. Where you build good houses in it. Where you plant vineyard and eat the fruit there. Yes. That's your portion. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You mean all the forces in Nigeria cannot checkmate? The menace of Fulani House, man, it's a mystery, sir. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your right hand. Give God thanks. Because you now know what fasting carries for you. You know what to engage with when you fast. You know what to look forward to when you fast. Give him thanks. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. The key of prayer and fasting remains effectual in your hand for life. No more shall you lose any battle of life again. No one's belly will rob them of their birthright. Today's a covenant day of open doors. Revelation 3 verse 7 and 8. The word says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no one shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, but has kept my word and has not denied my name. I know that it works. So there's something to do to entitle you to an open door. I know that it works. That is what we must do to entitle us to a life of open door. I know that works. You have a little strength, but you have kept my word and you have not denied my name. Therefore, I said before you have an open door and no man can shut it. Now, watch. The master key to a word of open doors is well defined. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. You love thy neighbor as I said. Upon these two commandments hang all the laws. All the laws and the prophets. Matthew 22 verse 36 to 40. All the laws. And the prophets. All the laws. And we know Paul said that all things, the master key, work together for good to them that love God. That is the master key to a world of open doors. <clears throat> the love of God burning hot in your soul. The love of God driving your life through. Yes. 
That is the master key to a world of open doors. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it has entered the heart of any man, what God has prepared for them that love him. They are always entering new doors, setting the pace for others. All of the time. That is the master key to a world of open doors. Do you love me? You can't love him and not know. He said, you know I love you. Simon, second time, do you really love me? I love you, Lord. Third time, do you know? Love me. He said, you know all things and you know that you know that you know that I love you. You can't love God and not know, sir. You cannot love God and not know. And the cheapest proof of our love is obedience. What is it? Obedience. He that has my commandments and keeps it is the one that loves me. And that loves me will love my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. I will keep him company. He will be my companion. We work together. And when you are in the convoy of a president of a nation, Whatever door opens to him, opens to you. Whatever salutes him, salutes you. They can't salute. I say, you are not the one I'm saluting. It's only the president I'm saluting. No, no. You are in that convoy. When you are in the convoy of the master, everything that bows to him, bows to you. That's the master key. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up your everlasting door, that the king of glory may come in. So when you are in love, you are in partnership. Remember, he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. You have his permanent companionship that enforces the opening of every door to you. Lord, engrace me to keep loving you more and more. That is the master key to a world of open doors. The love of God. For we know that all doors open to them that love the Lord. Among those who are called. It opens to them that love the Lord. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And that's you. Yeah. As you maintain the love of God as your new lifestyle, you find things happening on their own accord in your life. Amen. That shall be your experience Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. However, the following are very fundamental in giving expression to your love for God. Number one, and let me explain this first. God's presence will always compare the opening of every closed door. Israel came out of Egypt, God was in their midst. The sea saw them, it fled. Open door. Jordan was driven back. Open door. The mountains skipped like rams. Open doors. And the hills like young lambs. What a lady or sea, where are you going to? He said, tremble thou at the presence of the Lord, verse 7. God's presence, which is facilitated by our law for him, puts us into a world of open doors. And we're going to remain there. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What must we do to enjoy access to this world of open doors? Number one, be born again and remain so. <laughs> be born again and remain so. Make sure the fruits of salvation are ever manifesting in your life. Be born again and remain so. Don't go on a war from the Lord. Don't get on vacation from the Lord. There were cities of refuge in those days, we can be likened to the kingdom of God. When an offender escapes to that place, 
He abides there till the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. Any place outside there is not safe. So it's not enough to gain access to the kingdom of God. You must endeavor to abide there. Outside there is not safe. Amen. Amen. The prodigal son went out of his father's house. He was stripped naked. He was struggling to eat with pigs, pigs, pigs. Because he was out from his father's house. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Everyone that is born again is born to overcome the challenges of life. As the wind blows wherever it is, we are the sun. We can't tell where it's going or where it's coming from. And so it's everyone that's born of the Spirit. When you are born again, you are just a wonder to your world. John 3 8. Number two, continue to walk in the fear of God. God's presence was resident with Joseph. He said, Because I fear God. And the Lord was with Joseph. Genesis 39 and verse 5, verse 3 to 5. Verse 21, the law was with Joseph in the prison. The presence of God kept opening doors to him, opening doors to him, and his testimony, but I fear God. Genesis, 20, Genesis 42 and verse uh, 18, but I fear God. You want to walk in the realm of open doors, be born again, remain so, and continue to walk in the fear of God. Number three, be committed to following his leadings. Because when God leads, he goes with the lead. So behold, I send my angel to go before you to keep thee in the way until he brings you to a place which I have prepared for you. So when God leads you, he goes before you to clear the barriers, to cause the gates to lift up their heads. When they came out of Egypt, he didn't take them through the wilderness, although that was short. But he led them by the way of the Red Sea, impossible place to pass, but he went before them. Continue. I mean, remain committed to the leading of the Lord in your life and no door can be shut against you. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Finally, enter into a covenant to keep serving God as a proof of your love for him and the interest of his kingdom as a lifestyle. And he gave them rest round about. No door was shut against them because they entered into a covenant. Second Chronicles 20 and verse Second Chronicles 15 and from verse 12 to 15. He gave them rest round about. Verse 15. As a result of their entering the covenant to seek the Lord God of their father with all their heart and with the whole of their desire. He gave them rest round about. All the doors open. No door was closed against them. As they enter into a covenant to serve the Lord God of their Father with all their hearts, with all their desires, He gave them rest round about. You have entered your year of round about rest. Yeah. Grace to keep serving Him. Is released afresh upon your life today. Yeah. And Matthew 33, our anchor scripture as a commission, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added to you lavishly. They shall be added to you lavishly. Yeah. The young lions may suffer want and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. That's your portion. 
Lift up your right hand to heaven, everybody, and give God thanks for the light that has broken forth today in your life. Give God thanks for the light that has broken forth in your life today. Give God thanks. Give him thanks for putting in your hand the master key to a world of open doors. Welcome to your year of open doors. No door of favor shall be shut against you, against your family, against your business, against your career, against your spiritual life. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord the biggest clap offering. Amen. Well, you are here in this service this morning and you are not born again yet. That's where life in the kingdom begins. When Jesus saves your soul, you become a member of his own, God's own household. And that makes all the difference. You want your sins to be forgiven this morning by Jesus? You want your name written in the book of life today? You want to become a child of God today? Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. You like me to pray with you to be born again today. To become a child of God today. Stand to your feet. To have eternal life today. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Somebody else is getting on wherever you are. Please stand to your feet. Stand right now and let Jesus come into your heart and make all the difference in your life. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up. God bless you out there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Also, there are people here that need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. You need to reconnect back to your Heavenly Father. You need to return back home to God. You want to stop standing in the middle of the road. It's not safe. The traffic is heavy. You want to reconnect back to God. You dedicate your life to Jesus this morning. Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you at the same time. You want to stay there. Come back to Jesus today. Stand to your feet. God bless you, and God bless you, and God bless you. Now, all the precious people that are standing up, both for the first and second call, please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven, wherever you are, and pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I will serve you all the days of my life. And I desire and believe you to make heaven at the end of my journey. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. You shall not step back into darkness anymore. Amen. The battle over your life and destiny is won today. Amen. Grace to live your overcomer's life is imparted upon you. Amen. You never miss your steps. Amen. You make it to heaven at the end of your journey. Amen. I release the flow of eternal life in your, in your system in the name of Jesus. Christ has become your savior today and he will save you to the uttermost. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations, congratulations. Amen. Please get seated and complete those little forms or slips given to you. We want to be part of your joy and help us of your faith. Please do. And then we have this Believers Foundation class that holds uh, across a number of locations, both in Lagos and Otter. Over 700 of them. We will get you contacted to know the one closest to where you live by the address you have there. You go for only two Mondays. Um, tomorrow Monday and the next one. And then you are done with the six lessons. 
and then you can begin to live a triumphant Christian life. Don't miss that for anything. Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord the biggest clap of him. We have circulated, I believe you got your copy, on engaging the wonders of water baptism. Have you gotten your copy? Amen. Lift it up if you got it. You don't have it, please let them know that you don't have your own copy yet and they will give one to your hand. Amen. Please know that water baptism is a must to fulfill all righteousness. That came from the mouth of Jesus. Water baptism is a must to fulfill all righteousness. And no unrighteous man shall make heaven. So for all the ones who have been born again and are yet to be baptized in water, we have this opportunity for us this year. And please do. And you begin to walk in the newness of life without struggling to do that anymore. Can I hear you? I would therefore admonish that everyone reads this today and communicate that to your new converts. If you are not baptized in, the, in water yet, you better take advantage of the next one and you shall be blessed. Good news. <laughs> Amen. Water baptism takes place twice every month this year. And the first one comes off this coming Saturday. The first one comes off this coming Saturday. Therefore, for all that are here to be baptized in water, please take advantage of that and fulfill all righteousness by so doing. But much more importantly, be empowered to walk in the newness of life. Whatever remains as filth in any corner of our life, Jesus, by that mystery, will wash it away forever. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Also, like you had in the announcement, we have um, this three-day special program at Wolfby that targets some specific areas of need, and they are there to empower people to gain command over such areas. Interestingly, God's word addresses all issues of life. He said to Peter, get down to the temple and speak to them all the words of this life. All the words of this life. You go to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 to 13, you find it covers all issues of life. If you will hearken to my voice and observe to do all the commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, You'll be blessed in the city, blessed outside the city. Your star house will be blessed, your body will be blessed. Now, it covers all areas of life. Take advantage of anyone that applies to you and go through those three days hanging around with Jesus and you come out in your resurrected form in that area. This coming uh, Tuesday is the first module for the year. And... Um, it's focusing on covenant business startups. Covenant business startups. Covenant business startups. Amen. There's no point holding spanner and screwdriver to repair your generator when you don't know anything about it. This generator broke down. You now carry spanner, you wash short nickel. Your wife says, Where are you going? So I'm going to generate your house. Ha. Huh? Are you an engineer? No. But I want to repair it. Uh, it will become crack down parts. Your generator is gone for life because you don't know how to. You don't know how to. How to is as important as what to. You want to do business, you are correct. Amen. But how do I do it? Where do I start from? Jesus will show you the light and it will keep working. In the name of Jesus. You won't go up and down anymore. Amen. Ups and downs must end in your life this time. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because everything in this commission works. Everything's not working yet in your life. 
must start working this year. Please help me read that special announcement. Come on, please. Everything works here and you belong here, so everything must keep working in your life. Good news. <laughs> Covenant University emerged second out of 262 Nigerian universities, <laughs> next only to UI in the recent webometric rankings of universities across the world. Released on Tuesday, 27th of January, 2021. Also, Landmark University ranks number nine in Nigeria. Out of all federal, state, and private universities. Consequently, Covenant University and Landmark University emerged the first and second best private universities in Nigeria, respectively. To God alone be all the glory. Give Jesus a big hand. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering. Amen. The best two private universities on all rankings belong to this commission. This is the doing of the Lord and it's marvelous in our eyes. Everything here works. Therefore, everything in your life, in your business, in your career, we keep working from now. Stand to your feet. Peter said, such as I have, give I unto thee. Such as I have, the grace that is given this commission is place in space is released upon your life today. <laughs> freely he gave it to us and freely it is released upon your life this morning. Nothing fails in your hand anymore. <laughs> Nothing goes down in your hands anymore. <laughs> Put your two hands like this. Nothing dies in your hand anymore. <laughs> Nothing dies in your hands anymore. <laughs> Nothing dies in your hands anymore. <laughs> Nothing dies in your hand anymore. <laughs> the same master key to a world of open doors that is put into the hands of this commission is released into your hand today. Your year has come. Those who won't let you go will go down for you. Your year is finally here. Those who don't want to see your change of story will go down for you. Your year of entering your promised land is here. Those who want to stand on your way will be drowned in the Red Sea. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. If you check back to history, you discover Covenant since inception has been an award-winning institution because the hand of the Lord built it. Now, from now, the hand of God will be evident on all things that concern you. In the name of Jesus. Landmark came into existence in 2011. 2011? 2011? And several federal universities are behind. 2011? Number nine? 
we serve a God of speed? The hand of the God of speed will be upon your life this year. In the name of Jesus. Welcome to your world of open doors. And so shall it be. The week is declared a week of open door testimony. Your job, your miracle job is coming through this week. A number of contractors have not had anything contracting. But this week will be a week of testimony. Every marketing and divorce that seem to have closed down, reopens back this week. Every career that seems to have crashed, resuscitates back this week. When God opens the door, no devil can shut it. No door shall be shut against your life anymore. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Give glory to God. Give him thanks. Father, we bless your name. You are worthy of all the praise. And you are worthy of all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Let us share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever amen peace welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turnaround then expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth amen and amen you are blessed if we came in after the worship offering was received there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags do well to drop your offering as you go if you want to share your testimony in the second service, rush to the honor entrance, that is the entrance behind where the pastor is seat, uh, seated, and then share your testimony to the glory of God. Again, if you want to share your testimony, rush to the honor entrance and share it to the glory of God. The second service starts at 7.55 prompt. <laughs> 